Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. John's United Church of Christ on this beautiful day that God has created. Spring finally here, finally. We welcome you on this day that uh, we call uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. And uh, I think you'll figure out what that means here in just a few moments. So we're glad you're here. We invite um, you to sign the friendship pad in the pew pockets, pass them down the way so that everyone has an opportunity to do so. We welcome everyone, and especially if you're a guest with us today, we welcome you, and uh, be sure to stop by and say hello to uh, Randy Armstrong there in the back. He will have a special gift for you. There he is. I uh, have a special gift for you and uh, invite you to fellowship time, and just glad that you're with us today. We welcome folks worshiping with us online, and also invite you to click on that link in the comment section and sign in there, too, so that we know that you were worshiping with us today. It is a great day to worship. Just a couple of announcements before we begin. Um, first of all, it, uh, next Saturday is our all-church work day. Lots of spring cleaning and work projects to be done around the church to keep our campus looking beautiful and uh, spick and, spick, spick and span. Uh, so please join us. Uh, many hands make light work. Uh, we'll begin around 9 o'clock in the morning. There will be uh, lunch served. So Come join us and help out uh, around the church. We have a couple of other folks here. It makes my job easier as far as announcements. Uh, Connor Ekdahl is here on behalf of the, uh, the senior high mission trippers. And then Pam Weiss has a, an announcement about our blood drive coming up. So take it away. Good morning. Hmm. <clears throat> my name is Connor Ekdahl, and I'm speaking on behalf of the youth group. At the end of July, we are going on a mission trip to help at a homeless shelter, food bank, and community center in Indianapolis. We will be focusing on issues of hunger and homelessness as we support those who work on the front lines of these service organizations. As of now, we have four adults and eight youth going, and uh, we are raising money for this trip. On Saturday, April 27th, we are holding a service day where we'll be, we will come to your home and do yard work or like small jobs you need to be done around your property uh, for a free will donation. And there are a few spots left, so please reach out to the office to reserve your spot. And thank you for supporting the youth group and our mission. Dear Blood Donor, when Emily was born, she was the purest, most beautiful person I had ever seen. But we soon learned that Emily had a rare blood disorder and would need life-saving transfusions every few weeks. Now Emily is three years old. We get to do normal father-daughter things. And she's even taken a liking to one of my favorite pastimes, fishing. One day, Emily will understand that if it weren't for blood donors like you, she wouldn't be here for the bike rides, birthdays, and all of life's magical turns. Emily will need another blood transfusion soon. And even though it hurts a little, she always leaves as everyone's best friend. Wayne and I think about blood donors every day. We know that you're the reason Emily is with us. That's why we give blood ourselves as often as we can. Since her first transfusion and everyone after, she always comes home to us because of you. Dear blood donor, thank you for being the oxygen in her lungs, the energy in her legs. Thank you for giving blood. Emily's story is just one of countless calls for help needed and asking for blood from our blood banks nationwide. During the time of that video, which was one minute and 40 seconds, there were 42 patients that required blood from our banks. St. John's is responding to the need to fill those banks. 
with a blood drive that is being scheduled and is ready to go Friday, May 3rd, 8 a.m. to noon in Fellowship Hall. Don Meyer and I will be available after service today to take your name as a blood donor, to fill the volunteer slots during the day of the drive, to answer questions, to give you resources for those that are interested in finding out more as a new blood donor. Pass the word, talk to your friends and family. Let's fill those 54 slots that we have on our schedule, of which about 20 are filled as of today. I would say thanks for your time, but I think the, sa the thanks today is better coming from Emily and her family. Thank you. Julie Sachs is our lay reader today, and she's excited to get us going. So uh, let's begin our worship. I invite you to stand and in your place turn and wave and smile and greet your neighbor with the peace of Christ. Please join me in the call to worship. When we are scattered, Jesus, our good shepherd, gathers us in. When we are oppressed, Jesus, our good shepherd, cares for us. Christ knows us by name. Christ will lay down his very life for our sake. Please join with me in the gathering prayer. We meet in your name, Good Shepherd, assured that we are known and loved by you. Help us to grow in love that is genuine in its caring and self-sacrifice. We dare to risk acceptance of a healing role for ourselves and this faith family. Amen. You may be seated, and I'm going to invite the young people to join me here at the front steps. Oh, good morning. How's everyone this morning? Beautiful day, huh? Beautiful day yesterday. Did you get outside yesterday? Have a good time? No, you said no. 
You didn't? Oh, no. Well, be sure to do that today. It's a great day because I hear it's supposed to rain later this week. So, Well, it's good to see everyone. I have a little game for us to play this morning. Do you think you can recognize voices uh, by their sound, like whose voice it is by the sound? You think you could recognize someone's voice just by hearing it? Maybe. Bill's voice. Hmm? If it's Bill's voice. Okay. <laughs> well, let's try it. I want everybody to line up so you're facing me and not the congregation. So sit out here and look at me and don't look over your shoulder and let's see how we do. So we're going to try to recognize someone by the sound of their voice. Over there. So you're not looking at the congregation because I know you're going to cheat if you do, right? Okay, so I've asked a few people to read a, a line from our psalm from today, and I want to see if you can tell who it is just by the sound of the voice. Okay, you guys face forward. That's right. Okay. No cheating here, all right? Okay, number one, please read your line. <laughs> Who's that? It's your mom. <laughs> it's Miss Carrie. Very good. How did you know that? You know her voice because she is your mom. Does her voice ever change like that? It does. Does it get higher? When she's mad, it goes higher. Uh-oh. We won't go any farther. Okay, number two. Did you hear that one? A little louder, number two. A little louder. Do you know who that is? Aubrey knows. It is. It's Glenda. How did you know that one? <laughs> you were already talking to her today, so you heard her voice. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, number three. Let's uh, let's try number three. <laughs> wow. A lot of people know that one. Who's that? Mitch. It's Mitch. How did you know that? You know Mitch. Everyone, did you know that one? Yeah, how did you know that was Mitch? Hmm? Say, you, your dad talks to Mitch a lot. Yeah, we don't talk to Mitch, right? What a good one. All right, number four. For Bob and his staff, it was Mike. Who's that, Violet? Hmm? Miss Blunk. How did you know that? She's your music teacher, right? She has a pretty distinct voice. Yeah. Did you know that one? Yeah. She's also your music teacher, right, right. And, and kind of uh, the location sort of gave it away too, didn't it? You could tell where she was coming from. All right, uh, one more. Let's try this one. Number five. What's that? It's Pam. How did you know that? You could tell. She's right here, right? What's that? She's just singing too, right? Right. So you guys are pretty good. You recognized all the voices. How do we, how do we know when we hear a voice? It's, it's someone that we know, someone that we love, someone that we are around a lot someone that teaches us, someone that's friendly to us, someone that cares about us, right? All those things that help us know someone by their voice without even seeing them, right? Well, this morning we're gonna hear a story. Jesus talked about, uh, he called himself a shepherd one time, and he talked about how sheep know a shepherd's voice and can follow the instructions of a shepherd and how a shepherd guides the sheep. And so he compared himself to a shepherd and that his sheep know his voice because he cares for them, he loves them, they're familiar with him, and, um, and, they, and, and how much that, that shepherd takes care of them. Um, so in that scenario, who do you think are the sheep? If Jesus is the shepherd, who's the sheep, Violet? But all of us. You're right. All of the followers of Jesus, he compares us to sheep. Now, at first, that may not sound like a really great thing, but actually it is. Sheep are pretty smart. 
and we have a good shepherd caring for us. And so he said, the sheep know my voice, and I know them. And it's a way of saying how much the sheep know the shepherd, how much they know the love that the shepherd has for them, how much the shepherd has cared for them and familiar with them, just like we recognize voice of loved ones and people that teach us and people that care for us and are friendly to us right here at St. John Church and everywhere else. Jesus knows us and we know Jesus and he cares for us so very much. So, well, thanks for coming forward. Thanks for playing our game today. Let's have a little prayer and you can be off with Mr. Gary to uh, face home. Let's pray. We do thank you, dear God, for gathering us together. It's good to be together today. We thank you that you sent your son to be our, sh our shepherd who cares for us, who loves us, who has compassion for us always. We know his voice and he knows ours. And for this, we are grateful. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good to see you. Off with Mr. Gary. Have a great day at face home.
The New Testament reading is from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Please pray with me. Lord oh God, your son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people. So grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us by name. Follow where he leads. And with you and the Holy Spirit, opens our hearts and our minds to your word in this moment. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. The life of a shepherd in the ancient Near East was not a glorified one. Uh, shepherds were rough around the edges. They preferred spending time out in the fields rather than in polite society. And those folks in polite society would rather not associate with the shepherds. You might say a modern day equivalent could be uh, that of a migrant worker. But to a sheep, well, the sheep's life depended on the shepherd for everything. The shepherd was up in early in the morning, already prepared for the day ahead. Before the day would even start, he had already cleared out potential pasture lands of hazard and poisonous plants. He had scouted out for the opportune, opportune watering spots. He had checked each animal for its health. Then the shepherd with rod and staff in hand would lead, uh, not chase or drive, but would lead the flock to pasture. You, you drive cattle from behind, you lead sheep from ahead. They follow, responding obediently to the call of the shepherd's voice. They know the voice. The shepherd would direct them to pastures for grazing, not allowing them to eat too long in one place and deplete the grass, but to leave some so that it would be strong and grow and replenish itself in, within a few days. The shepherd would lead the sheep to calm and fresh water. The sheep would not drink from rushing waters for fear of falling in and thus soaking their coat uh, of wool so quickly that they would sink and likely drown. Shepherd would lead them home at the end of the day, caring for any cuts or injuries, cleaning them up. A straggler or an injured sheep would be thrown across his shoulder and carried back the miles back to the sheepfold. The shepherd would watch carefully over the birth of a lamb and if and when that lamb still covered in birth fluid, struggled for life, that shepherd would cover its nostrils with his own mouth and breathe into it the first breaths of life. The life of a shepherd was not a glorified one, but it certainly was one that was filled with compassion and love for the sheep. The shepherd meant life to the sheep and that shepherd would lay down his life for those sheep. This is the image that the crowds around Jesus would know when they heard this story about sheep and shepherds. And notice that Jesus didn't just announce, I am a shepherd. 
No, he said, I am a good shepherd. By adding that extra qualifier, in Greek, it's the word kalos, which can be translated as noble, model, exceptional. By adding that word, Jesus is saying he's not just any old run-of-the-mill shepherd. He represents all that is good in shepherd worlds and even more. Strength, dedication, compassion, ready to lay down his life. This is opposed to a hired hand who is only on the job to, re, to collect a paycheck and nothing more. Those around Jesus who were of the faith, they remember the ancient texts too. They would immediately recognize this shepherd image. That is the image that readers would remember from the Psalms. They would know when they heard the idea of shepherd, that the Lord is my shepherd. That's the image that all believers comprehend when the Bible mentions sheep or shepherd some 200 times. It would be a pretty safe argument to say that Psalm 23 that we heard so beautifully sung for us this morning uh, is the most familiar of all texts in our entire Bible. Most of us, many of us, know it by heart, whether through memorization in Sunday school or confirmation or uh, just through sheer numbers of repetition. In a real sense, the psalm speaks for itself. As acclaimed theologian Walter Brueggemann once pointed out, it is almost pretentious to comment on this psalm. And yet the familiarity of the psalm can make it cliche and in some way lose its power for us. So it is good to consider it again and fresh outside the context of one of the more familiar places such as a funeral. This all on a Sunday that we call Good Shepherd Sunday in this Easter season. And it is no wonder that in times of crisis that people are comforted by the words and the image of a good shepherd. Just as they reach such moments and they turn to the words of Psalm 23 in the most difficult times, and can't recall officiating a funeral without using the words of Psalm 23. And if a family doesn't ask for it, I often will suggest it. The message is not only that there's a shepherd who can point out paths that lead through dark valleys, but there is one who is shepherd to us who walked the dark valleys himself, making that ultimate sacrifice, making that journey through the valley of death on our behalf. And since he made that journey, marks a trail through those valleys to light and life again. The psalm also pr promises that providing that providing nature of a shepherding God, even in dire situations, those darkest valleys or those valleys of the shadows, depending on the interpretation that you're reading. I once heard Dr. David Greenhall, former president of Eden Seminary, uh, who was speaking actually on a text from Isaiah, but he was speaking on a passage about passing through the waters of Babylon that has a very similar meaning and uh, understanding of this phrase from the psalm in the darkest valleys. He said, notice it doesn't say if you pass through or perhaps one day you might pass through or maybe you eventually will pass through. It says when you pass through the waters. And likewise, the psalm even though I walk through the darkest valley. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, there's no ifs, ands, or buts here. Even though I will, or even I am, diagnosis of illness will come. That dreaded midnight phone call will happen. The job layoff, the economic downturn, the natural disaster, they all come in the form of dark valleys. And without prodding, no sheep in its right mind would ever enter into that on purpose. But with compassionate and certain guiding presence, the loving shepherd, we journey through those valleys in faith, 
and which was fear. Rabbi Harold Kushner, who's the author of many books, but most famously of When Bad Things Happen to Good People, says this. Most people who have been hurt the greatest by life get stuck in those valleys of the shadow, and they don't know how to find their way out. But that's the role of God. The role of God is not to explain and not to justify, but to comfort, to find people when they are living in that darkness. Take them by the hand and show them how to find the way to sunlight, to green pastures, and still waters once again. The power of the psalm and the power of the image of the good shepherd is made evident so many times in our lives. A story from Pastor Edward Marquardt, Presbyterian Church in Seattle. He, he tells a story from his own experience, and really it's an experience of all pastors. I've, uh, in some form or another, I've experienced this myself. But he tells it this way. He recalls, I received a phone call from Joyce. Joyce is a church member a faithful church member. She called one late one evening asking to go and visit her mother. Her mother was in critical condition at the local hospital. And so I went over right away. I was told she was a devout Christian, but she hadn't been to church in many years. Upon my arrival, I found Joyce with her mother at the hospital bed. She was comatose, didn't know her mother. Her mother didn't know me. She was over 90 years old, couldn't see well, was wearing hearing aids. I moved close to her bed and I asked, can you hear me? I'm Joyce's pastor. But apparently she couldn't as there was no response. I moved a little closer and I spoke quite loudly into her right ear. May I share a scripture with you? And her eyes opened a little, but there was no other response. When you're unsure of what to do, you fall back on the old standby. So I began reading Psalm 23. Spoke loudly into her ear. My lips were about three inches from her hearing aid, speaking as slow and as distinctly as possible. I almost shouted, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And as I continued reciting, I noticed her lips began to quiver. And then I could tell she was mouthing the words right along with me. As I finished, her arm slowly raised from the bed and blindly reached for my face. She gently pulled me over and kissed my cheek. And she said, I love you, Glenn. Glenn was her husband. He had died some 20 years before. It was a pause and a quiet moment and then I left having shared this special moment when some powerful words brought forth those comforting memories of a loved one. The good shepherd, the one who is our comforter, our constant, our provider and caretaker. A shepherd who loves and cares so deeply for each and every sheep. A good shepherd who feeds the hungry, who heals the injured and brokenhearted, who has compassion for the downtrodden, the oppressed, the left out, who gives rest and refreshment to the tired and the weary, who would lay down his life for our wandering ways. For us as people of faith, as Easter people, to affirm that the Lord is my shepherd is to affirm that God is the only necessity of life. It is the foundation of our faith. It is profoundly radical affirmation that transforms us and thus can transform our world to be sure, Psalm 23 offers powerful words that comfort us at the time of death and the time of crisis, but it is also words that should comfort us even in the 
oh, so ordinary of everydayness. The Good Shepherd. But through the Good Shepherd, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Amen. Please be seated. We come to our moments of prayer when we lift up our personal prayers, our concerns, our joys, our thanksgivings, and particularly remembering those folks in our faith family who are in need of God's strength and care today. First of all, we ask that you remember the family of um, David L. Dininger. David uh, died last evening. Uh, arrangements are still being made. Um, a faithful soul of St. John Church, caretaker of the church for many years. And uh, we lift them up in prayer, remembering Lorraine and the entire uh, faith, family and friends of David. We also ask God's healing spirits to continue to be with Arnold, to hold close Glenda, and to be with Carla as each one journeys, life's um, challenges, and particular health issues. So let us draw together hearts, minds, and spirits first in a time of quiet prayer. I'll guide us then through a pastoral prayer and then invite you to pray together our Lord's Prayer. Let's pray.
most loving God. We pause in these moments and take time to quiet our hearts, to still our minds, to focus on you, to bring you our joys, our concerns, but also through these moments that we pause and listen to your voice how you call us, how you lead us in this journey of life, how you know us so well and we hear your voice so well. And so shepherding God in this dangerous world, let us hear you as you call us. Let us be the church that you have called us to be. We pray for the church. We may be devoted disciples and followers of your word to gather in fellowship, in mission and ministry, being generous to all those who have need. In this season where the earth greens again, we pray for the earth. We pray to be good stewards, that there may be green pastures and still waters in your creation, that we may restore them to the goodness and the purity that they had been at the time that you created them. We pray for all people of the world, for nations and leaders, places where once again war and violence has broken out in these days, we pray for peace. We pray for wisdom and guidance of those leaders that war and chaos shall be no more. We pray for those in need, for those in want, that they shall be in want no more. We pray for the the ill, the dying, the brokenhearted, that they may know the banquet that you set before them and comfort them in your name. We pray for ourselves, pray for our families, the ones we love. We pray for those that we've named out loud and those that each of us can name in our hearts who are in particular need, whatever that need may be. God bless them. You are the good shepherd. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, who's a goodness, mercy, leads us down right paths and restores our souls. These prayers and all of our prayers, we pray in the name of your risen son and our Lord Jesus, the one who taught us to pray together saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we go into the offertory, let us remember, Jesus offers us fullness of life, protecting us and advocating for our needs. What will you give to join him in the work of building beloved community in the world? Let us give from a generous and compassionate heart.
please join with me in the prayer of dedication. As we lay our tithes and offerings before you, O God, we are reminded of the importance of generosity and stewardship in every aspect of our lives. May these gifts be a reflection of the love we have experienced in Christ and our commitment to steward them faithfully for the work of your kingdom. Amen. Before we receive the benediction, just a reminder, everyone is invited to a time of fellowship downstairs just as soon as we're finished here. And then you're invited to join us for our Digging Deeper session. We'll meet in the uh, link room at about 1030. Uh, a great text and story to dig into today. So please join us uh, for that conversation. And now as you go from this time together today, may you have received Christ's protective, unceasing care and love for you as the Good Shepherd. And because you are beloved, may all that you do and all that you are be a reflection of that love in our world. Care for your neighbors, just as Jesus has cared for you. Friends, go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.